do you have name tags on a lot of these guys for the past month or so? No, but I know uh, Camden Sewell made the remark to uh, Liam Spence and some of the older guys have trickled back and it's been great to see those guys and through their conversations, I know Camden made a comment that he felt like he was a new guy uh, at the start of the fall and it's just kind of a, a flipped way of saying there's a lot of new faces. And, uh, you know, we've had some things come up too. There was kind of a four day illness thing uh, that broke out on campus for a little while. So we've had guys sick. We've had other things come up where it doesn't feel like we've quite got the momentum going yet. Uh, but now that we're playing scrimmages and we're in our full NCAA allotted practice time, uh, I think that's gonna, gonna pick up some steam here soon. You guys got a lot younger in the off season. How, how have they been handling that? I think the transition in the weight room is the most, uh, you know, it'll grab your attention the most aggressively, I guess. And I think that group, you know, adjusted about as well as you possibly can. I mean, it's going to be difficult. The standards are different than the kids have when they come in. So uh, Q's going to have them uh, doing a little extra. And uh, they did have to go through some days of, of those periods, and there's still corrections going on. But overall, I think that group adjusted about as quickly as you can to, again, just getting acclimated, what our standards are, what we're looking for. And, and that's really what that crucial period building up to scrimmages is, is get their bodies ready, their arms ready, but also just indicate to them the way we try and do things here, which is nothing special or crazy. Uh, we don't try and change anybody right away, but we do want them to know that there is kind of a system we got going on here. From your perspective, any leaders stepping up that maybe weren't as vocal last year? I, I think Camden just is in a different place than he's ever been. Um, I don't think he has the world figured out. He's still young, just like all the other guys, as at least relatively young. Um, but he, he's certainly been a leader. Uh, Redmond Walsh has still been around, so he's kind of been a hybrid of a guy who obviously doesn't have eligibility left. Uh, but leadership from him. So on the pitching end of things, with Frank and Richard working together and those two guys, I think it's been excellent. But also, you notice Dolander and, and Burns and, and Beam feel like you know age or years in the program isn't something that's going to hold them back. Uh, they know how big a part of they were last year's team. They want to probably hold on to a similar role that they had last year. And so you can see they're exuding some leadership. Um, you know, out in the field, it's, it's kind of come sporadically from different guys, uh, but it is completely different th than last year. And if anything, Christian Scott, maybe because he has the most years under his belt, uh, has really kind of been aggressive about leading in his own way. Uh, but it's going to be interesting. We're going to need guys to not necessarily be the captain, uh, like Mr. Jeter or anything like that uh, for the positional group, but there's going to need to be bits of leadership from almost everybody that's going to co contribute for us on the field, and uh, it's going to be a lot of guys. What does that outfield competition look like right now? It seems like a, a lot of guys for, for three spots. <laughs> absolutely wide open. Um, absolutely wide open. Um, you know, when it comes to Griffin Merritt transferring in, he's, he's had a lot of success at a different school, um, but it's – um, you know, it's a fresh start for everybody, including himself. And so um, Christian Scott, again, has done everything we've ever asked of him in this program. And I think that's going to, you know, probably put him ahead of a lot of others just because he knows exactly how to navigate through the waters of what we got going on here, what the league requires, what college baseball requires. Um, but it, even with those two guys included, you could put them all in a hopper and say it is absolutely wide open. On the infield, it's a little easier to jump to conclusions at this point. That's all they would be is conclusions. But um, yeah, I think if you ask me, don't don't hit me up this way, but if you hit me up every day and say, who's your starting three, it might be three different guys every day for the month of October. And then what have you seen from Jared getting back into the flow of being an everyday catcher? Yeah, some of the pitchers have, have asked, um, Drew Gilbert asked, I asked how his deal was in Houston. I know the Astros honored him and brought him in. Um, I was upset I couldn't make that, but duties here called. Um, but he was the latest to ask, how's Dickey look behind the plate? And he's another guy who's taken a leadership role in his own way. Uh, and, and one way that he's doing that is trying to take ownership of that position that he's trying to convert to. Um, and we've got a couple others that are fully capable back there as well, but he's, he's much improved behind the plate. Who are some of those young guys in the outfield, you know, Chapman and, and guys like that? Yeah, I mean, um, Reese, I don't, I don't want to leave anybody out, but my gut instinct is to answer the way we've talked in the office. Reese Chapman, Dylan Dryling, and Alex Stanwich are three guys um, that all very easily could have taken money in the draft 
Instead, they're here. Um, but when you're a freshman, you kind of get knocked down and your world starts to speed up at times. So I don't think we've gotten the best version of them yet. I think as they get more and more comfortable by the end of the fall, uh, you guys will be able to see you know, who, they, who they are and who they can potentially be. And those three guys could be really, really good players in this league. And uh, how soon they can earn innings, especially vital innings in the spring, will probably be how soon can they learn to navigate through the waters of college baseball, knowing all the signs, just the little things. But if you see those guys in uniform, they're ready right now physically to compete in our league. Griffin, how important was it to get a guy in the outfield with that experience, but also a right-handed bat in this lineup as well? Yeah, no, you, you sniffed it out there. Um, normally, as a college coach, you're starving for left-handed hitters. And uh, for the first year since we've been here, and maybe the first year I've ever been coaching, it was a long conversation in the summer. Who's going to be a right-handed hitter? Um, and I, I, don't, I still don't know those answers. Again, cannot uh, discredit what he did. Uh, at University of Cincinnati and in a competitive league too. Uh, but it is a fresh start for him. It's year one here for him. And uh, Hunter Ensley, you can't discredit what he did this summer for one of the best summer organizations ever. Um, so it's encouraging that there's availability or there's options there now. Landing Griffin, Griffin having some other guys step up a little bit. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see how many left-handed bats we have in that lineup every day. The list of guys you all have in the minor leagues speaks for itself, but is this the most talent you all have had? Pro in your time here? Prospecty, probably. Um, and, and prospects are what scouts are looking for when they come here. Um, in the big leagues, you probably can only make a team up of so many grinders. Um, even a, an organization like the Rays that makes the most of their money. I mean, they got guys that are super talented, uh, whether it's big velo on the mound or really physical or really can handle a bat, can really run. Um, you, you can win in college baseball with guys that just want to compete for their teammates um, and make the most of their opportunities in the weight room or with nutrition plan or sleep. And I, I think people would be astonished if they had the complete biography of those guys that started for us last year. Um, what they were ranked as high school guys, how much scholarship money they were on. Um, I don't know that it was the best prospect group, but they proved if you win, everybody gets what they want. Um, you continue to play, you get accolades, you get more gear. You get more per diem on the road, whatever the allotted amount is, um, and then maybe you get drafted a little higher too. Um, but this this group is pretty interesting as it relates to the MLB draft and, and the prospect situation. So, and we've we've kind of made it a we've gone out of our way just to be honest with you to try and help guys with getting to the next level, being prepared. Um, and we have not had a guy turn down a, a major league offer since we've been here, whether it be in the draft or free agency deal, which. Sometimes it takes two to tango, our coaching staff and an MLB's organization's interest to make that free agent deal work out uh, with a kid. So you knew what Maui was capable of, but what's it been like watching him work out in the field so far? It's been good because um, I think he likes to be challenged. You, you, you know what you're getting skill-wise, but you don't know what you're getting um, as far as the makeup of the kid entirely. And, and that goes for other guys, too, that you recruit even when they're in high school and they transition straight to our place because – Recruiting happens so fast now and so early, you don't really get the time to do that, it seems like, at least not for all of them. Um, but it's encouraging that he likes to be challenged uh, from the coaches. Um, and, and then also, I think he, he wants to lead in his own way, too. He's made comments. He's done certain things. I, I think the biggest thing for now is just getting him acclimated for what we think our style needs to be and what we think wins in our league and making sure he's not only on board with that, but he's kind of being the epitome of it because that's what Cortland was for us last year and then the guys in front of him too. He's the first one we've had here that's kind of a, a big name prospect or a Team USA guy, but the guys before him have done pretty dang well. And that's becoming a fun spot to talk about on our campus is who gets to be the shortstop at Tennessee. And that's the way it should be. I mean, Chris Burke, I could go on about tradition here when things were going well, but just in our league, you know, every year you see what happens in the draft. If you play shortstop in this league, you're expected to be a lot. And uh, he's certainly capable of, of being that, but we got some work to do. Landon said he's been working on his off speed to be more than just a get me over pitch. How do you feel like that's developing? Yeah, you can see it in the bullpen. And um, I, I think more than anything, his decision to stay here this summer, which was completely his, um, he had an opportunity to go off with Team USA. 
Uh, he, he wanted to give himself a chance to rest, recover, and then build up. And physically, he just looks different. If you guys, I don't know if you'll talk to him today or you'll see him today, but Google a picture from his freshman year or some video, and he just looks like a completely guy, different guy physically. Um, so he looks great there. And in the bullpen, you can see the off-speed pitches are more crisp. Uh, there's more shape to him. He's only had one outing out here so far. Kind of opening day for us was yesterday. Um, and it looked good, but probably not yet where he wants to be yet. So it's, it's good to have things to work on. Um, he, he certainly had some fanfare last year and had some success, but um, you don't ever really figure this game out completely. You can ask Max that. Um, you you got to constantly be evolving. And so it's encouraging he's trying to do that on the physical side and the mental side, even though he's, he's one of our more, our more talented guys. So like having Q back and how important is his presence in this program? Yeah, it makes you sleep better at night. Um, and, and, you know, last year we had a great spring for a lot of reasons and, and included what was going on in the weight room. But this time of year is so crucial to develop culture, correct mistakes, hold guys accountable for missing a class assignment or, um, you know, missing a, a meeting with the nutrition or whatever it might be. And he just takes a lot off our plate as coaches and lets us coach. And the guys know if they get out of line or they don't meet our standards, that's the guy they're going to hang out with. And Q is really funny and he's fun to hang out with, but also uh, it's not so fun when you're, you know, kind of paying the piper with them is the easiest way to say it. So just makes it more fun to come to work, which I think that's why kids enjoy playing here is the coaches enjoy coming to work. So therefore it's a good environment and then they add to it. And it's a pleasure to be around him, but also just the confidence in knowing our guys, and to steal a quote from some scouts that I talked to, our guys look different than, than most guys across the country in uniform. And it's 100% because of what he's getting out of them in the weight room. And of course, nutrition and, and recovery play into that as well. Does it keep you up at night trying to figure out how you're going to get all those arms innings this season? There's a lot that keeps me up at night. Uh, if you want to we can talk about some of those things off record <laughs> yeah. on, on on record uh you, you know I, I think right now you want competition uh we two years ago we had a year that was unique where you kind of saw the writing on the wall these are going to be the nine or ten position players that we have to play and i i think if anything right now we'd like to ramp up the competition i, I will say the freshmen if they prove they're the best guys we'll throw them i mean bernsey and, and beam and Wyatt Evans throwing in the SEC championship game last year. We've proven we're not afraid to throw freshmen. Um, and you kind of need to so they develop and they're ready to be the next guys. Uh, but it's going to be an absolute war. And some of those freshmen just kind of – I'm just kind of sizing it all up right now. I'm not, you know, putting a ceiling on anybody are going to really need to be patient. Uh, but I mentioned Max Scherzer earlier. That's a guy who was a part of a phenomenal pitching staff, had to be more patient than he wanted to be, and just kind of get his feet wet and get some innings. Um, but as he developed, uh, when those innings opened up, he was ready to rock and roll. And I think that's the difference between recruiting and actually coaching is reality is it's difficult as a freshman to make a huge impact in this league. you got to be special physically and mentally. And again, some of those guys could do that. Uh, but a big theme for them is if they stay patient, look at Coach Anderson's resume. Uh, we've been able to do some nice things here. Uh, they'll, they'll enjoy the rest of their career if they've got some perspective that way. Have you seen the biggest, growth, more guys. Have you seen the biggest growth from Burns and Beam after one year in the program? Yeah, Burns just physically looks great. Um, you know, came in, lost a lot of bad weight with Q. Uh, but again, a guy who took the summer to recover from a, a heavy load, uh, workload in the spring, and then just right now he just looks healthy when you look at him. And he looks lean, he looks strong. He looks in shape when they run sprints. He wins them, um, and then he's throwing the ball tremendously well. I don't think there's anything different going on, and it's always come out good for him. Uh, but he looks like he's got a little extra sense of determination, and the ball's coming out good for him. And then Drew Beam has kind of done some different things too. When, when you locate your fastball and it's coming in at a decent, you know, velo and all that good stuff, off speed is where you turn. That's what we talked about with Dolander. And you can see Beam has kind of done some things with the off speed. And then physically, he just looks bigger. Um, he's already got a big frame. He's got that quarterback frame we talk about with his career in high school. And uh, he looks like a durable, physical starter now instead of just a freshman that's going to have to grow into his body a little bit. 
with some of the success and the growth that this program has seen since you've been here, do you think that could be an example to some of the younger players that, like, hey, this is what happens when you buy in? Yeah, I think so. I, I think um, at the very least, we've shown that we'll look out for their best interests. Um, if they buy into the way we're going to do things, that there's a good chance there's wins on the horizon. Um, but I hope they're hungry, and I hope the older guys are hungry too. If you look at some of the tradition that was here at our school, um, all you got to do is look at the wall when you guys are done. It's been a very small portion of time that we've had success. And then if you're going to look around the league, um, you're talking about really, um, other than a handful of schools across the country, the best tradition in college baseball is in our league. And uh, we haven't done nearly as much as some of these programs have, even in recent history. Um, so I think a big key for them is to stay hungry and realize there's a lot more that we'd like to accomplish. I think fans and our program wanted to accomplish even more uh, last year. It makes it a little bittersweet at the end, but it also uh, makes you hungry and helps motivate you a little bit for this year. So we need to, we need to make sure that's a part of our formula. Yeah, I mean, it, it excites me that I get to partake in it, you know, whether it be football Saturday or just seeing soccer's recent big win, um, you know. But a little bit of it stresses me out, too. There, there was, uh, when we got here, there was a sense of if we can just provide a little bit of oomph on campus, it'll be well received because there wasn't as many positive things going on. And now it's like, we better make sure we're, we got these guys ready to rock and roll in the spring because we got to carry our own weight around here. Um, and I think it's awesome to be a part of. Ultimately, that's what you want because the sports help each other out if they're having success. Uh, and then, again, going falling back on our history, JP, Luke Kochaver, Jan Gomes, those, they would talk about when you walked around campus, you knew the other sports were going to compete for championships on some level. You didn't want to be the weak link. Um, you know, so you enjoyed the success, but you also had a competitive drive in you that you wanted to be one of the better programs on campus because there was competition within in, in a healthy way. And I think that environment is here. And I've said it multiple times, so I'll say it to you guys as of late at talks and things like that. There's just a unique deal where the coaching staffs interact pretty well here and try and help each other out. And there's a sense of camaraderie there that's tough to come by because we're all in our own worlds. We're all at our own facilities. Um, but maybe it's because people in Knoxville are friendly, the coaching staffs, for the most part. Don't call them after a bad loss or don't call me after a bad loss, but uh, there's a great sense of camaraderie. Last question, Dan. I like to talk about Zane Denton, a lot of SEC experience, so just talk about him coming into the program. Yeah, no, it's it's been great to have him. He's a Tennessee kid. I think we're, you know, just a little late to the party um, as it relates to his recruiting efforts. When he was in high school, we had just gotten hired. Uh, we, we were able to kind of get in there and get an offer with him, but he had a, a, a really ex long existing relationship with Alabama, including their hitting coach that was there uh, his first couple years. Uh, but it's just been great to have him here uh, because when we face him, it's like, man, this Tennessee guy, it'd be great to see him in a Tennessee uniform. But also he shores up a spot that is one of the more difficult spots in college baseball to fill. Uh, maybe other than having a catcher, uh, that, that's the spot. You, you need a great defender in there, but it's also a spot like the big leagues, you expect great things offensively. And when you talk about Andre and Trey and Rucker, those are three guys that sat in the middle of the order, made every play for us, um, and shored up a position that, you know, maybe we weren't uh, quite as rich in, in wealth uh, when we first showed up here. And, and I think part of the success in the program has been we've had a dynamite player at that position. And he really impressed us with how much better he got defensively, how he took care of his body or developed physically there, and then hitting. Everybody knows he's, he's fully capable of doing that. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Coach.